awesome reminders this morning to lift our spirits and prepare us to open up God's Word this morning. Well, I'm going to be taking a break this month, uh, at least for the first three weeks, from um, Genesis. So you can, if, you're, if you already have your Bible open to the first book of the Bible, I apologize. You might have to go a little deeper in today. I decided uh, the next couple weeks, this week and next week, I'm going to do a two-part series on anxiety. And there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, if you look, if you think about it, there's a lot of recent events that have caused anxiety to be a high in America. We often hear of the threat of World War III from major media outlets. Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, places like this all seem to pose a serious threat to our American soil. And as tension with these countries rise, so does people's anxiety. Talk of nuclear weapons being used um, attack the, the sense of security that we have enjoyed for decades in our country. Of course, even in our own soil, rising violence and unrest, mass shootings at parades and grocery stores and churches and schools, everyday places flood the news on a regular basis, leaving us to no longer feel safe doing the most common of things, things that we must do. The divide in our country has never been so fierce. Inflation threatens our way of life. The threat of a recession looming in our minds. Will life be the same in a few short years? And whose fault is it? Will it ever get better? So much political hate, so little working together for the good of mankind. And perhaps scariest of all for, for a Christian is the rapid moral decline in our country. We wonder, can it possibly get any worse? Free speech, freedom of religion, principles that have been safeguarded since the founding of our country now under unprecedented attack. We deal with all kinds of moral ideologies such as gender, social justice, sexual orientation, abortion, all cultural attacks demising the authority of God's word. One who is committed to standing on God's word wonders what it will cost them to do so in these ever darkening days. And then there's COVID-19, a virus that shook the world at its core in a way that had never been experienced before. Not only did it threaten our lives, it disrupted the routine flow that gave us a sense of regularity. We were forced to find a new normal we turned to the professionals and then quickly realized that this was uncharted territory that no one knew how to navigate through. Over two years later, and we still see the impact of this devastating blow caused by this virus, and we can't help but wonder what's next. Not only has the impact of the virus caused anxiety, but so has the virus itself. According to the reported trusted source published in The Lancet on November 9th, 18% of COVID-19 patients developed a mental health illness like depression or anxiety within three months of diagnosis. Their risk was doubled compared to people who didn't have COVID-19. In other words, those who developed COVID-19 had a two times greater risk for developing a mood or anxiety disorder for the very first time. The virus itself seemed to cause anxiety. Currently, anxiety disorder affects over 40 million people in the United States. That's one-fifth of the population. 
It is the most common group of mental illnesses in the country. So if you struggle with anxiety, you're not alone. Right? This is something that is very, very common. In fact, if we're honest this morning, it would help us to be so. We all have anxiety to some degree or another. So all of that to say, I think it, I, I felt led by God to do a two-part series on how God calls us to handle anxiety. Because I've noticed with people that I minister to and just people in the community that anxiety has risen. Um, and, and, and people are wondering, how do I handle this anxiousness that maybe they had never had before? So as we go to God's Word today, let's ask Him for help in this area. Father, we come before you today as a broken, humble people needing help in this area. We want to honor you with every part of our life. And I pray that you would speak to us through your word this week and next and help us to understand how we can do that when it comes to our anxiety. That we can cope with it in such a way that brings you honor and brings you glory. And that we may find benefit from your word. That as we trust in you and what your word says to the point that we obey it and follow it. That it would lead us to have a peace in our own hearts during these troubling times. In Christ's name, amen. Well, anxiety is defined as a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Typically, about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. The American uh, psychologist. The APA <laughs> defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. The APA describes a person with anxiety disorder as having recurring intrusive thoughts or concerns. I want you to keep that in mind. Having recurring intrusive thoughts or concerns. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about anxiety. So the question I want to work on answering this week and next is what does God call us to do when we have recurring intrusive thoughts and concerns? When a thought crosses our mind and causes us to feel worried or nervous or uneasy, what are we to do? What does God want us to do? Now, of course, going to Scripture to answer that question doesn't answer every question concerning anxiety. I don't mean to try to do that in the next couple of weeks. Because no doubt, anxiety is a very complex emotion that sometimes comes out of nowhere for no apparent reason. There certainly is a physical aspect of anxiety that is affected by adverse levels of chemicals in our brains and how things work. But God, by God's grace, sometimes medicine is able to help with the physical aspect of anxiety. But what I want to focus on today is the core cause of what I call circumstantial anxiety. I define circumstantial anxiety as any anxiety that results from circumstances in life. In other words, the uneasy feeling or worry that is caused by something in our world. That uneasy feeling you get when you watch the news or you find out you might have cancer or when your child doesn't answer her phone or you lose your job and so on. In every case, in terms of circumstantial anxiety, anxiety is an uneasy feeling brought on by the thought of loss. You're scared of losing something. Might be loss of security, might be loss of a loved one, loss of health, loss of something physical or something emotional or something spiritual, or oftentimes the loss of control. 
Anxiety is the fear of losing something dear to us. Let's say you got offered a new job and you're not sure if you should take it or not. Whether you should stay with the job you have or go to the new job. And you can't sleep at night because you're worried. You're worried you might choose the wrong path in your life. Well, at the core of that worry is the thought of losing something valuable to you. On one hand, you have the fear of losing a stable job for a less stable job. Or the fear of losing out on a better job opportunity if you don't take it. If you were certain that one way or the other would be more beneficial in the end, you would not have anxiety. The uneasy feeling is caused by an uncertainty that stems from the fear of loss. And all circumstantial anxiety can be pinpointed to that, to the fear of losing something. There are many ways to look at anxiety. A lot of different definitions, a lot of different ways of looking at it. But I think this understanding helps identify the core source of anxiety. This definition gets to the heart of the word. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to go through two very popular biblical passages concerning anxiety. And as we do, I, I encourage you to think of anxiety as the fear of loss. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to open up to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, where Jesus gives us some very familiar words. In Luke chapter 12, verse 22, Jesus says to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. So Jesus is saying, don't worry about food or clothing. Now think about it. Why would anyone have an uneasy feeling about food or clothing? What is it about food and clothing that would make someone feel anxious? Well, what's at the core of their fear? What does a person lose if they don't have food and clothing? Well, they could lose their health, their dignity, their way of life, their comfort, their security, their livelihood, even their life. Right? So there's a lot to be lost if you don't have food and clothing. But even though the loss of food and clothing greatly affects our life, so you could, you, could, you could sympathize and see why people would worry about it if, if, that, if they're in fear of losing food or clothing. So even though that's the case, even though there is a tremendous amount to be lost, Jesus commands us not to fear the loss of those things. Why? Why? That's the key. Why? Wait a minute, Jesus. These are very important things in life. Can't, probably can't find anything more important than food or clothing from a physical aspect. And you're telling us not to be anxious about that? We could lose everything. We could lose our life if we don't have food. Why? Why should we not worry about these things, Jesus? Well, Jesus gives four reasons why we shouldn't be anxious about such things. Look at verse 24. He says, consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They neither have storehouses nor barn. And yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? So the first reason Jesus gives us for not being anxious is because God will meet our every need since we are very valuable to him. Food and clothing, those are needs. Those aren't wants. Those are needs. God will provide our needs. Here's what anxiety does. Anxiety downplays God's role in your life. It's almost looking at life and taking God out of the picture. Because God is our caretaker. No matter what you go through, He will provide your needs. 
And as Christians, we need to remind ourselves of this truth every time we feel that uneasy feeling brought on by the fear of loss. We need to remind ourselves, God loves me. I am valuable to him. He will take care of me. I mean, if he takes care of the birds, why would he not take care of us, his own children? He will take care of us. Second reason Jesus gives for not feeling anxiety is because anxiety will not keep us from losing anything. Luke chapter 12, verse 25. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? No matter how much you worry, your worrying cannot add even one hour to your life. In other words, you will incur loss in this life. Right? At some point, you will die. Worrying will not stop it. It won't even prolong it. There's zero profit in it. It doesn't do any good. In reality, it hurts us, not benefits us. And Jesus is just pointing that out. It's ironic that by fearing the loss of something in our life, not only are we not keeping ourselves from losing what we fear losing, we are actually creating loss. Anxiety robs us of two precious components in our life. Every time you're overcome by anxiety, you lose two very precious components in your life. You lose joy and you lose peace. And I can think of very few things in this world more precious than those two things. Joy and peace. You can't be anxious and have joy and peace at the same time. So not only does anxiety not benefit us, it greatly hurts us. It causes great loss in our life. And I think this is something else we need to remind ourselves of when we fear the loss of something in our life. To remind ourselves, this isn't helpful. It's actually hurting me and those around me when I am succumb, when I succumb to anxiety. Third reason Jesus gives us for not being anxious is because God is trustworthy. Look at verse 27 and 28. God says, Jesus says, consider the lilies, how they grow, neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed in like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the fields today, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? You of little faith. There he gets to the core of anxiety. As hard as it might be to accept, at the very root of anxiety is a lack of trust in God's provision. We fear loss because we have but little faith. Think about what Jesus is saying here. One of the reasons God created the flowers is to display beauty. That's why God created flowers, to be beautiful. Even though this beauty lasts only for a short time, it is their intended purpose. And God makes sure that they fulfill their purpose. Even though they're going to be burned later, he makes sure that while they're on this earth, they bloom and give us that beautiful composure that we love to look at. So to think that God in such detail will assure that the flowers reach their God-given potential in life, however short-lived that might be, and then fear that he will not do the same for us, who are much more valuable, is quite absurd. 
God has a purpose for you. He created you for a reason. And he will assure your purpose in this life is fulfilled, just like he does for the flowers. You can trust him. You will not endure any loss in this life that you were not meant to lose. Every loss in your life is orchestrated by a loving, trustworthy God. He knows what he is doing with your life. Every detail of your life is laid out by him. He decides what to allow and what not to allow. So you can rest in knowing that whatever happens, whatever you're going to lose tomorrow or the next day, it's for your good. It's all part of God's good and gracious purpose in your life. Now, I know it's easy to stand up here and say these things, right? But very difficult to remind ourselves of these truths and to accept the fact that at the core of our anxiety is a lack of faith. It's because we have little faith. But I think it's tremendously beneficial if you struggle with anxiety, as all of us do to some degree, to admit, I have little faith. And thankfully, we don't have to have a lot of faith to be a child of God. Because I know my faith wavers all too often. When I get anxious about something, I can look at that anxiety and I can say, you know, I'm struggling right now to trust God with this area of my life. You will never experience peace in your life. That calming feeling inside your soul that snuffs out that uneasy fear of loss if you do not entrust every part of your life to the sovereign king of the universe. So when you go to the doctor and you're supposed to find out if you have cancer, I trust you with that, Lord. Whatever, that, whatever comes out of that doctor's mouth is your will for my life, and I trust you with it. Or when you go into work, you talk to the boss, and you're not sure what's about to be said. I know that every, everything that comes out of his mouth, Lord, is orchestrated by you. And I trust that. You say, well, pastor, that's hard to do. I know. It is hard to do. It absolutely is hard to do. But it's not hard to do because God's not trustworthy. It's hard to do because we have little trust. The problem's on us, not on him. If, if you trust God to provide what is needed in your life, that you can live out your God-given purpose, I mean, how great would that be to go through life like that? To wake up tomorrow and say, yeah, whatever happens, happens. It's all in the Lord's hand. It's all going to be best for me, and I just trust him, and... You'd have a lot more peace if you could live your life like that. Jesus' main point in this passage is that our purpose is vastly more important than anything in this life. You have a purpose. You were created for a purpose. And the things that can be lost in this life are not linked to your overall purpose that God created you. You and I were created for something so much more important than the things that can be lost in this world, though they are very important. So in Luke 12, 23, if you go back up 23, Jesus says, For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. And if I was there at that time, I would have raised my hand. Oh, time out, Jesus. Time out. Question, if life is more important than food and the body more important than clothing, you do realize you can't have life without food, right? What's he talking about? He's saying there's something more important than even physical life. There's an eternal life. There's an eternal 
playing here. Verse 29 to 31, he explains, Do not seek what you are to eat or what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things. They seek after them. And your Father knows that you need them. Instead, he says, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. I love how Jesus puts this all together for us. Rather than fearing the loss of things in this world, Jesus calls us to seek after that which is eternal, that which cannot be lost. Don't focus on what can be lost. Focus your thoughts on what can be found. Another reason Jesus gives us for not being anxious. We are to focus on that which is eternal rather than to be anxious about losing what is temporal. God will provide the temporal. It's a promise right there in verse 31 or verse um, 29 there. Verse 30, you know your father knows that you need them. He knows you need. He knows what you need. He'll provide your needs. No need to consume our minds with losing what cannot be lost. Nothing in your life that is not meant to be lost will be lost. What we need to do is to focus on the eternal. Because what we need will be provided by Almighty God. Anxiety will not add one cent to your stockpile. So let God worry about all of that. Instead, focus all your intention on what can be found. Because in reality, when we focus on what can be lost, we miss out on what can be found. This was just eye-opening to me. Because when you're focused, when you're worried about the things that you're going to lose in this life, what that means is you're not focused on what can be achieved for the kingdom of God. Which I didn't really add in my notes, but kind of makes me think that's the enemy's purpose in anxiety. To get your focus off of eternity. You were created to seek The eternal. When we focus on what can be lost, we miss out on what can be found. That's where all of our mental energy should be focused, the things of God. Reminds me of Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. What happens when we focus on the things on earth? What happens when we turn on the news and we watch the news and and we're focused on what's going on on this earth and how things are going and what might happen or might not happen? We get anxious. But what happens when we focus on eternity? We make our thoughts go towards God sitting on his throne, being sovereign, having a plan. We being his children and spending eternity with him. At the core of anxiety is what we choose to focus our minds on. Being heavenly focused brings about a peace that everything that happens in this life has an eternal purpose. So to fight anxiety, to deal with those those uneasy feelings or that fear of loss, we need to focus our minds on God's eternal plan. Because in God's eternal plan, Christians can't lose anything because everything's a result of gain. And that's Jesus' point. Even what you lose here on earth, God will bring out his eternal purpose through it. A purpose, as we just were reminded by music, we will see one day when we come before him. That's Jesus' point. Seek his kingdom because it's eternal. And from an eternal perspective, perspective, even that which is lost results in gain. Every trial, every loss that you endure has an eternal opportunity. 
Focus on the eternal opportunity. That's what you and I were created for. Eternity with Jesus Christ. Now, if anxiety helped, I would say go for it. But it doesn't do any good. And you're only hurting yourself and others around you. But if we focus on God's eternal plan through this, it's almost like we need to remind ourselves to ask those questions. Okay, this is what's happening. I'm anxious about it. I'm worried about it. But what might God have planned through this? What might God be doing in me through this? What might God want to use me to be a witness for him through this? Because somehow this is all going to work out for my good. Somehow he's got a perfect plan for me. And he's going to be with me throughout this. How can I become more like Jesus through this? Because somehow we can rest in knowing that nothing purposed for us by the all-powerful, all-knowing, perfect God of love can be lost. What a kingdom focus does is obliviate anxiety and produces thankfulness and peace in your heart. I'll close with Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. We'll look at these, these verses more closely next week, Lord willing. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supposition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And Here's the promise in verse 7. If we do that, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're not talking about making anxiety go away. We're not talking about getting to a point where you never lose anything in life. We're talking about a point to where you take those anxieties to God and you're flooded with a sense of peace in your heart. And the anxiety is overcome. Being kingdom focused takes work. Satan as well as our flesh, they don't want us to focus on eternity. We can't do it ourselves. So when our hearts begin to fear loss, we take those concerns to God in prayer. But we do it with thanksgiving. Which being thankful in the midst of of loss takes an eternal focus. But as we do this, we'll talk about how to do that more next week. Lord willing, the peace of God will protect. And here's what I love. The peace of God, it says, will protect our hearts. That's our emotions. Right? We're the seat of anxiety. It will be exchanged with peace. And... It will also protect our minds, our thoughts, which is what causes the anxiety. Those negative thoughts, those fear, thinking about the loss of something dear to us. Now, I want you to notice that this peace is from God and it's the peace of God. We're talking about a supernatural peace that comes from God being given to us when we put our trust in him. Peace from God is what protects us from anxiety. As we focus on him and his eternal truth, taking our request to him, trusting him to do what is best with these, he grants us a calmness in our hearts and our minds that only he can give. Seek this peace. Focus on obtaining this peace. Because gaining that peace, that's what we're after. That's what we should be seeking after. The peace of God, a peace that comes from him. That peace is what overcomes anxiety. Father, I want to thank you for being the answer to everything. We can turn to you. For there's nowhere else to turn. There's no answer given anywhere else other than your word for how to overcome anxiety. And to see clearly from your word that it's 
a peace that can only come supernaturally from you. I pray that that would cause us to turn to you in moments of anxiety. That we would change our focus from that which is earthly to that which is eternal. And that through that renewed focus, you would grant us peace from you. Your peace. Thank you in Christ's name. Amen.